welcome back coach vibes we hope you guys are ready to overanalyze all things bravo with us today because we are on week 120, or at least it seems like it, of the Scandaval. Yes, and after being fired nearly three years ago, Jackson and Brittany have made their triumphant return to watch what happens live. They're ready to spill all the tea, and they're soaking up every minute of it. Yes, they are. <laughs> so... Jackson and Brittany have made what I think is a pretty chaotic return to the Bravo universe. They were invited back to watch what happens live after being fired. I mean, I don't think it's confirmed that they've been fired, but like, let, let's be honest. Asked to not come back. <laughs> yeah, uh, strongly suggested, perhaps. Um, so they're on watch what happens live and they clearly saw this as their audition to try to get back into the show because they are giving too much (laughs) they really are and it's so weird how they're kind of like they're both playing very different roles like Brittany is like really like leaning into the kind of like sweet like persona that she's kind of always had and it just it feels so forced like it really did feel like she was just like had so much anticipation and was like so eager and like really like wanted like this to work out and it's like it's obviously a little sad because I get it. You know, it's a good paycheck. They're obviously missing it. Um, but it was just, it felt really like thirsty and like it, a little bit too much. And then they were so opposite too, right? Like it's like they didn't, like they did everything but prepare notes before because <laughs> they had two super different strategies. Like, yeah, yes. she was like, what? Like she was shocked about everything. Yeah. Jax was not shocked about anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually was picking up less on Brittany and more just like how thirsty, like Jax was almost like foaming at the mouth he was just so excited he kept like talking over her yeah he was just, his eyes were like that bulgy like yeah. jack excitement yeah he was just like he was like ask me another question ask me another one <laughs> yeah i know and that's just it like it's like so weird he's like saying all these things about like how like sandoval has been cheating on ariana like for, for their entire relationship and how schwartz has been like i think cheating on like katie their entire relationship and just like all these like allegations about like two of his like allegedly closest friends um and throwing them under the bus the first opportunity he gets of course of course um and yeah he just like he just he was doing a little bit too much I think to uh I don't know did it make you feel like you wished that they were gonna come back next season or no not at all well we talked about this last time right when we found out he was going to be on like Mm -hmm. there's zero part of me that misses Jax Taylor um I don't feel like that's what we need he was really good TV for a long time but uh no he's just so problematic and I and like he's just like a known liar like I thought it was so rich at the end when he was like oh like I don't lie like (laughs) I always cop to it and it's like you cop to it after lying for an entire season yeah when you basically can't hold on to this lie anymore like (laughs) he called lying about the Kristen hookup in season one a fib right (laughs) yes 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 yeah that's an interesting retelling and even just like the stuff with like Katie like I think he like re like threw out that allegation from season three that she had like cheated on Schwartz as well and like that whole storyline if if people don't remember she allegedly uh motorboated a (laughs) a D nether region (laughs) region on a man um and it was just like a like what even is that that's not a thing not a thing (laughs) but then also just like you know the the story just ended up like feeling a little bit too fantastical and Jax was like so anti-Katie that season he really just like he he actually ended up saying um that he wished like shorts would like make out or like do stuff with like another girl in front of Katie like it was like so messed up so I don't know like to a certain extent like I think Jax like thinks that he's like bringing a lot of like the tea and like that he's like being this like truth sayer of uh of Vanderpump rules nowadays but I don't know if we need like his chaotic energy as you say like on this on this show anymore like I think we're good no and so he did drop a lot of truth bombs with like a question mark because like mm-hmm. you know how how much of this can we believe also knowing this is his first time back on television he knows he has to bring it yeah. um So he, yeah, of course he brings up Miami Girl within two minutes. (laughs) Miami Girl is such a a hot topic these days. I know. (laughs) That um, allegedly this is the girl that Tom had cheated on Ariana with, like, at the beginning of their relationship, that Kristen Mm -hmm. really, like, orchestrated bringing her from Miami to um, 
sir while yeah. like Tom and Ariana are working literally like flying her out to like on like a waitress salary like at that point right like they still like weren't making like huge amounts of like Hollywood money they were all still working like they had to actually work for a living like yeah they were probably a little bit more comfortable than they had been before but still like and that's the craziest part it's like whether or not this happened like Kristen still went so far out of her way <laughs> to like blow up Tom's like space yeah, yeah I know she like always went so hard after Tom it was great god bless Kristen <laughs> it was excellent television like it really like was. you can't match it I mean I except know. maybe this season where, where it's like quite crazy but um yeah yeah, because now Miami girl is like one of the girls, like one of the main friend groups. So that's that's what's so crazy about this season. Wait, is she? Well, no, Miami girl in the sense that like the new Miami girl is Raquel. Oh, I was like, is Miami girl there? <laughs> no, she's not. Oh. She's not one of the gang. But like Ra- Raquel is Miami girl. Right, right, thing. right. Yeah. Oh, you heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. Raquel is, uh, is Miami girl. OG um, Miami girl. But yeah, he so Jack says that he swears on his child's life, mm-hmm. which first just like didn't have to do that. No. Um, no. that Schwartz has known for a long time. So really eager to see what Schwartz says about this. Yeah. Because Kristen has said the opposite. Um mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah he's just like oh we talk every day he's my good friend he yeah. knew the whole time yeah um and then he also says that tom had cheated on ariana a couple other times recently mm. that britney was shocked i don't know how i feel about this like i don't know he's not like the most reliable narrator yeah. if this is true though it just has me thinking like this freaking boys club we keep talking about like if this mm-hmm. is true and you knew this whole time and you've just been sitting on this like waiting for your chance to be asked back on to watch what happens <laughs> live to yeah. like this is the time that you're gonna like tell the truth it's yeah just, it's weird and that's why Jax has always been like such a bit of a wild card on this show. Like he does have kind of like the protection of this like boys club mentality in Vanderpump Rules. But he also like is always the first one to like break rank and just be like YOLO. I'm going to go do whatever I want to do. I'm going to like tell everybody about what you guys are up to and like completely yeah. like drag you through the mud. Like it doesn't make any sense. Like And, he- and when he does it, he like mm-hmm. acts as if he's doing this like because he's being a good person, but he's not. He always does it strategically, mm-hmm. usually because he's in hot water and he wants to be like, look over there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh man. Actually, oh, that reminds me of something. What was... I feel like something else. Oh, that that actually makes me think about Summer House. So never mind. <laughs> well, we'll get into that. We'll get too. to it later. We'll get to it later. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that 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 just the watch what happens live airing with the two of these guys. Like it was just so weird. I really just feel like they ended up choosing them because a they wanted to be on the show. B they were like a good get or like a good enough get for um like the reunion like kind of like coinciding with like the taping and everything so like it kind of made sense from that standpoint but I did see that this was actually the season high for watch what happens live this year was the Jackson oh. Brittany yeah they, they just shared the ratings I think earlier like this week um and so higher than actually, the LVP one I think so higher LVP and higher than Katie and uh Danny Pellegrino Oh gosh. I know. That isn't that crazy? <laughs> I'm it's I'm kind of surprised because I'm like, does this just mean that there's like a lot of like Jackson Britney fans out there that like we don't even know about? Or do we well, just know that like Jax is gonna deliver something so crazy that we have to tune in for it? I mean, look, we tuned in. I don't always watch Watch What <laughs> no, Happens Live. True. Like yeah. Uh, but this is what's always kind of like been a thing with Bravo is like sometimes they do misconstrue kind of like I I don't know, I guess like good press yeah. from bad press kind of thing yes. like yeah. we're all gonna watch it because we know it's gonna be a train wreck but we don't necessarily want more of that but then again yeah. we're telling them we're tuning in we're giving exactly. them a thumbs up so maybe we <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly I feel like that's like the Rinna curse right like yeah Rinna watching her on like this season of Real Houses Beverly Hills was like so hard and like so annoying and so infuriating and we all said like if she's back next season we're not gonna watch and then like season like ratings just continued to be like great greater and greater because we were all just like so excited and then we were just like so let down by the end of it because we were just like okay this is enough that was a yeah. lot of build up build up for nothing yeah you know for sure it's uh <laughs> it was weird and the last thing too is that Andy said that Jackson and Brittany are the last 
last couple, like last kind of OG couple standing in Vanderpump Rules. And like mm-hmm. that, I, I was shocked. Like I, I, I actually didn't put that together. And like, how messed up is that? <laughs> I know. Well, and that's the crazy thing too. Cause if we think about like Scandaval, like at the beginning of this season, what we're watching and like before everything like came out, like seeing Tom and Ariana, like I was kind of like, wow, like I can't believe that these are the guys that like lasted. Like I really didn't think it was going to be the two of them. Um, Not that I knew like who it was. Cause I really didn't think that like Katie and Tom were really good together either. Um, And obviously like Jackson, Brittany have their, their faults and they've had their challenges. Um, but like Tom and Ariana did feel like they were like such a good kind of like unit and like seeing them like couch shopping on that like day, like in like um when they went to go like at the couch for the bar um and just like hearing them kind of like talk about the two, their relationship and then having Sandoval have the confessional where he talked about, um you know, is this going to like, is this bar also going to break up Ariana's in my relationship? Like, I really don't want that to happen. And it's just like, well, yeah. look at that. <laughs> yeah so yeah never would have guessed that it would have been these two that are the last of the three the three like kind of valley what is it the valley village couples that they were calling them Uh, Vanderpump Valley Village couples and then like at the end when they're just like what makes such a great couple and they're like trust and honesty I was like (laughs) no you're not gonna make us sit through this like I refuse to pretend that we forgot the entire history of this couple (laughs) I know I know I think it was kind of more like you know right time right place willing to settle down (laughs) kind of like yeah who else would want to be with Jax Taylor (laughs) yeah I mean and then uh, I just saw that they're putting out a a podcast too that Mm -hmm. looks like a direct copy of Stassi and Bo's like the, yeah is it the good the bad and the baby yes um, yeah where they essentially talk about parenting like yeah. the cover is like Jackson, and Brittany and their son their son yeah. is adorable I he will is. say that it's a very he's, cute little photo like it's adorable <laughs> he's so cute yeah um but yeah I'm just like oh guys <laughs> well and the thing is like so in the blind item world the thing that like has been like been talked about a lot is how like he has basically been shopping around kind of like this like concept of like his own like reality show about his family right so like this is the version of that that they could kind of get picked up and like get like going right so this is this will be their new means of like an income because the the spin-off version of their life just hasn't happened so oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> well I on that so. note <laughs> guess we'll just have to see yeah so while Jax clearly has a lot to say in all of this Scandaval uh situation someone who's a little bit closer to this is actually Sheena and she's also spilling all of the tea on her podcast but before we get into that we do have a request for you please be sure to like and subscribe we want to go to BravoCon we need a thousand subscribers to be able to justify doing that so please just go ahead and put that like click that little like button and click that little subscribe button (laughs) it might be in Vegas so maybe maybe we'll see you there yeah exactly that would be so fun (laughs) so Sheena's been working overtime to kind of rehab her image after what is portraying on the season so far now that everything with Scandaval has kind of come to light yeah yeah so basically so far this season we've seen Sheena kind of really go to bat for Raquel obviously she was pumping her up with all the short stuff uh Sheena's also been doing a fair amount of damage to kind of like Katie and Katie's image making her seem like a crazy ex-wife like making her seem like her like requests and her behaviors are so unreasonable um and even in this most recent episode you know at the Ariana and Tom's pool party like Sheena's really like cheering on Raquel and she's really just like driving that wedge like deeper and deeper between Katie and Schwartz and now that like the Raquel affair has kind of come to light Sheena's like been backpedaling um all of her like stances both on like her podcast and just in general like especially around like some of the Katie stuff too but definitely around the Raquel stuff because she was definitely her biggest advocate so far (laughs) yeah and like obviously it makes sense for her to be backtracking like she definitely wouldn't have gone to bat for Raquel as hard as she did had she known all of this stuff especially because Ariana is you know her best friend Mm -hmm. so I definitely think that that part is 100% genuine but I think the Katie stuff is kind of more murky because a lot of the parts of like her driving a wedge in between Katie and Schwartz 
yeah, like, like it was kind of instigated by this Raquel situation. But even when you take Raquel out, she still has a bone to pick with Katie. Like when mm-hmm. she tries to get Katie to um, take back her her hotel for their wedding so, yeah. so that her friend who couldn't come, which is like a whole other confusing thing. Yeah. Um, I think she, when Katie says no, she basically storms off and goes to Schwartz and she's like, your ex-wife is being pathetic or something like that, you know? I know. And then I hated Schwartz's response to that too, where he was like, oh, well, you know, let me tell her that I'll get back together with her and then maybe she'll, as if she wasn't the one that like asked you for the divorce and ended this relationship. Like, what do you mean? Why do you think that like, she's going to feel so validated and like loved and accepted because like you want to get back together with her? Like, how dare you, Schwartz? How dare you that was <laughs> yeah was so upset <laughs> I don't like I feel like I guess he thought that was like a funny like yeah mark but it's like oh my god did you just like that was horrible I and, like, know it really makes you sad to see them like keep getting into these same fights that they were getting into mm-hmm. when they were together yeah um in any case this is about Sheena <laughs> yeah I know <laughs> <laughs> but yeah there was just kind of like a lot going on there and And I even sorry I like I really questioned the validity of that like converse like that whole kind of like thing that was happening like this whole like weird thing about like well it's about the food and beverage and it's about adding a person to the hotel room and the hotel is sold out and like oh this like whole thing like I kind of in my conspiracy theory brain (laughs) tell us I will fully admit it but I'm like okay so what happens here is Katie has like basically repeatedly like um disinvited herself from or like disengaged with Sheena right like she doesn't invite Sheena to the uh Las Vegas like divorce party Mm -hmm. like Sheena's rejected in that way excuse me and then um and then Katie decides that she's not going to go to the wedding so again Sheena's like rejected in like two ways and so the way for Sheena to then reject Katie is to like basically not even have her at the resort she's like I don't even want her to have her at the resort I don't want her vibe there at my wedding like I don't want her to like do do all this like stuff and it's just like well so maybe this is actually just your way of like being like I I just want to be able to kick Katie out and because I can't disinvite her from the wedding because she's already uninvited herself like this is my way of doing that so that's my little conspiracy theory brain (laughs) no that that makes sense I've also heard some things that are like it's um they don't want to break the fourth wall but it's like uh Katie's gonna want to go because that's gonna be a big event that they're mm-hmm. shooting for the show so if she can't go uh-huh. to Mexico then she's not going to be in a lot of the scenes and then she's right. not going to get paid so right. is that how it works though like I don't understand how because do I they don't get know paid <laughs> per, by episode or do they get paid for the season or they okay must, so they must get a per episode thing but I wonder I would I can't imagine you wouldn't like they'd, should, they'd still film with her and have like some like interspersed scenes because that's what happened True. at Sheena's last wedding which she brings up this time too she's like talking about like christina kelly and how christina kelly and stassi Stassi. like and it's so funny too because she says it as if christina kelly and stassi were at her wedding being mean girls talking about sheena's like dress and stuff and it's actually funny because if you go back and rewatch that episode like stassi does actually i think give sheena a compliment she's like wow i'm actually kind of impressed by like what she was able to put on here um obviously they do diss the dress so like i'll give her that um the bridal crop top. I mean, I don't think you're going to live it down. Although I, I do think people are doing that now. I feel like the oh, bridal crop top has come back. So she knows before her time. <laughs> maybe. Before her time. Hey, a crop top was really big in the 2010s. Um, but yeah, so I just feel like she's like, she's kind of like thinking that like this whole, like she has this conspiracy theory brain too, where she thinks that like this like whole thing is going to happen where they're just going to be talking like badly about her when she knows like, you know, she knows not everybody I think is, not everything is about you. Not everybody's like, all of their brain capacity is like about like how they can be a mean girl to you so like maybe you're just like reading a little bit into this that's that's true too but yeah. then that's obviously like then disproven because we see like the flash forward to them like st- standing on the balcony like watching the wedding being like wow we got really good seats to this wedding I did laugh <laughs> I, I I love a good sneaky edit I, I think know. <laughs> that was so funny oh my god the editor is so good so I did. I did the homework. I did the due diligence. Yeah. And I, I listened to Gina's <laughs> podcast on this. So I'll tell you some of the tidbits. Um, the first one is, yeah, so she's definitely being like, oh, you know, when they went to the girls trip, I got such a different version of the story that they were like bullying her and they were so mean to her. And mm-hmm. then I watched and like they weren't at all. And like Katie wasn't bullying her or being mean. And it's like, 
no they were still kind of mean to her like <laughs> a lot of people have come out and said that like even ariana in this episode is like i think what happened here is they gave her the mean girl treatment yeah. as they have done many times in the past like yeah like you know raquel can still be extremely shady and mm -hmm. we cannot condone anything that she's done yeah with tom but i think those like in that situation like it, there was definitely both sides to be seen yeah um but then the funniest part is she uh she does seem to kind of be making it a bit about her like she's yeah. like you know i don't know how i'm gonna be able to trust someone again because like tom seemed like such a nice guy and i've known him for like 13 years and he's always oh been God. so kind and she starts to cry um and then she's like you know like I've been having nightmares since since New York and it's like <laughs> I just keep thinking about it it's like the first thing I think about when I wake up and when I go to bed and I was oh just like oh my god <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah way to way to make this breakup all about you Sheena <laughs> I know and like you know to give her some credit like yeah she's been good friends with tom yeah and tom and and obviously ariana's her best friend she didn't see this coming a lot of people mm -hmm. did not see this coming as mm -hmm. like to this extent so it it, it yeah. must definitely shake you a little bit as a person to like have this For thing sure. go on in your friend group and you have absolutely no idea but mm -hmm. it's just like in that whole spiel she like didn't mention ariana once yeah well and the thing is too like i feel like all of her backtracking is to be able to like save face from this most recent season because she is being like I don't want to say torn apart online because I think that like Raquel and Tom Sandoval are probably being torn apart online more but I definitely think that like Sheena's had her fair share of like haters kind of like come out of the woodwork from this like this whole situation um and the way that she's like constantly going to bat for Raquel all the ways that she's kind of like choosing the guys over the girls like that just leaves, leaves such a, like a weird gross feeling in my mouth that she's always like kind of like aligning herself with that group instead of like the girls um she has always done that like she's always been she's more always of a guy's girl that. like she's yeah. never been a girl's girl yeah I mean you could Even... probably do some sort of retrospective on it oh, yeah sorry. like no. to go back from the beginning because yeah. like you know she came into the show mm -hmm. um like she didn't have like she had no chance like the girls were so mean to her from the beginning because they had found out about her past yeah. which is just also kind of like wow the full circleness of this <laughs> show know. is wild because she was so came in and they were like oh you're a cheater because you split up a marriage mm -hmm. like she never had a chance with these girls so maybe that's why she aligned herself with the boys right from the beginning yeah. but who knows like but, but she also like got Jax to like rub sun lotion on her like in like the first episode of Vanderpump Rules <laughs> when he true. was like super dating Stassi which like I realized that like rubbing sun lotion on somebody isn't actually that much of like it's not like a sexy thing to do but it does have like a certain connotation to it especially when you're like watching your boyfriend do that to the girl that you hate <laughs> and like it's like a very like you could have asked anybody on that float to, <laughs> to like put some sunscreen on you like you did not need to ask Jax Taylor to like do that for you like that's uh, yeah that's very true but yeah it was just so funny like she's like they obviously can't say too much because they want to keep it for the show. I think they're definitely under like a strict NDA. That's why mm -hmm. Kristen's going on her world tour on the podcast. Exactly. <laughs> um, but she's definitely working like overtime, Sheena, to mm -hmm. kind of just backtrack on everything when it's like, no, like you were still at fault in some of these areas and it had yeah. nothing to do with Raquel, really. Like, yeah you are still being, as Katie said, a troll. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's why I'm curious to kind of see what it's going to be like at the reunion, um, because I know that Sheena on her podcast has said that she's going to like, she has already apologized, apologized to Katie in person or like at least on text message or whatever, and that she plans to like at the reunion bring up the fact that like she wanted to apologize to mm -hmm. Katie directly so that she can kind of do that, which is like all well and good, but I guess like I don't know is is it kind of like a Ramona-ism where you like just get like you apologize and you did it in person so like you get to do it and now you get to like just be kind of excused for your behavior for like the entire last season um and even though her behavior wasn't like the worst it was it's still like you know we're watching her like basically like not care about like their divorce and like have kind of like her explain away it like in her podcast now so I don't know. You've already done the damage to this relationship forever, right? Like Katie and Tom are still not talking, according to uh, the most recent um, Watch What Happened Live that like, Katie was on. So like yeah. clearly, clearly their relationship is not in a good place. And Sheena did not play an inactive role in 
making that happen. She played a very active role in making that happen. So I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of messed up. <laughs> yeah, I really I'm really curious to see what happens at the reunion. It's yeah. uh, apparently it got explosive within the first two minutes. <laughs> okay, we should make a prediction. Cause did you see that they um that they said that somebody got violent and they like Andy had to like pull them apart and yeah, it's and not it's and not- it's it's not who you think so I'm like oh my god but then who is this I know because we could think of a lot of people that we would think that it would be yeah yeah like so obviously the people that we think it would be would be like Lala and James right yes those are like obvious people and we if know it's not like the three involved if not like Ariana Tom or Raquel and they said but that it's I don't not think Ariana them. would do that yeah so um, that leaves like what Schwartz Sheena who like has a restraining order against her right now? Uh, LVP. Please say it was Schwartz. <laughs> Is there anybody else on the show? <laughs> um, I heard like could it have been Brock because he was trying to Brock. defend um Sheena. Sheena. Oh, I could see that. I could also see Allie for some reason. Like I you feel think? like I feel like I could see Allie kind of like coming out of like her like tiny timid like good girl kind of like persona quiet girl persona maybe it's not like really good girl persona um and like just like going at like Raquel or something like I could see that kind of <laughs> happening maybe like I would love to see it happening I guess it's more than anything security to re- restrain <laughs> Allie <laughs> the tiny little Allie I don't know maybe <laughs> uh, uh Andy Cohen could do it though Andy Cohen I'm sure could uh, hold her back um we, so we, th- yeah. those are two pretty good pred- predictions Brocker and Ali I guess we'll have to just check in and see what happens <laughs> I'm so excited to see yeah we'll, we'll report back <laughs> see how our responses went so while we wait for the VPR reunion and, mm-hmm. and continue to see what unfolds Summer House is actually still airing it's <laughs> It's getting a little bit overlooked because of all this insanity of, of Scandal yeah. but Summer House continues and Lindsay and Carl continue to be the beating heart of these storylines. <laughs> they really do. And it's interesting too, because I feel like the cracks are finally starting to show in Carl and Lindsay's relationships, especially in this most recent episode, but they're having like the Studio 50 for- forest 50 party. Forest. <laughs> uh, and so unfortunately, between kind of the, rela- the t- discussions that are happening between Kyle and Carl and Carl and Danielle and Lindsay and Paige and like everybody like it's all kind of like starting to unfold what is really going on in this relationship yeah it's it's so wild like I was just watching thinking like wow Amanda and Kyle are really just making a hating Lindsay their entire personality oh but my then- god but then it's like, no, it's the whole house. It really is the whole house. But I do think that it is like focused at Amanda at the core. And I don't know if it's focused at Amanda because Amanda's actually the one that has the biggest problem with Lindsay, or if it's because Amanda's love and like want to be in a relationship with a relationship, a friendship with Paige and Sierra, who are super anti Lindsay at this point like is kind of like thus in affecting kind of like how the entire house is like responding to Lindsay oh because, yeah that's interesting yeah <laughs> this is crazy <laughs> because I just feel like Amanda like she does not want to be friends with her she does want to be friends with Paige and Sierra um I think that makes sense and it only like it just it just feels like this shift that's happened it doesn't make sense. And I think that like part of the reason why, and maybe I'm jumping ahead of myself, the like whole like Amanda not wanting to talk to Lindsay directly has happened is because if Amanda makes up with Lindsay, then what's she going to do? Because Paige and Sierra are never going to be like team Lindsay and okay with like being in a good place with Lindsay. Like they don't want that. Like I don't think they're interested in that. But I think for a while, Amanda at least was like cordial with Lindsay while still Mm -hmm. being friends with Paige and Sierra, like something seemingly just broke after, you know, the reunion um, where they made that comment that that Carl works for them. Yeah, it it's just it's all so strange the way that all of this is playing out. Like, I definitely will say we've said it before, like Carl and Lindsay do seem to really be playing up like the happy couple perfect couple Mm -hmm. dynamic there's something kind of like off about it it's yeah it it does get annoying really quickly Mm -hmm. but the people but everyone in the house's hatred for them is just so 
excessive like yes. it's just so overpowering mm-hmm. that it's uh it's just really confusing it is really confusing and so this is kind of what I like what I was thinking like it's really interesting how at the start of the most recent episode of like the as they're kind of like kicking off this party um Carl like says in his confessional like uh, what was it I have it here um how do we go from kind of like don't talk like that to my girlfriend to like because that's basically what he's saying right like he doesn't want Kyle to talk about Lindsay in the way that she has that he has and he like wants to have a conversation with Kyle to be like you can't talk to my girlfriend like that or you can't talk about my girlfriend like that and then when Kyle and Carl actually sit down to have a conversation it immediately goes from uh, like basically like do you guys even like me and Lindsay Kyle doesn't even answer that question goes straight to like talking about how like you've changed and the reason that you've changed is because of Lindsay and it's like well this that a that doesn't answer the question (laughs) and b it's like amazing because like what Kyle is basically doing is that Kyle is making like him and Amanda like this like fully united front that is like in like in what is the word like indestructible almost like they can't be like taken apart and so what Kyle is then doing is basically like going after Carl and getting him to like get in a fight with Lindsay because Kyle and Amanda are like they are a couple they are a team they are a duo and Kyle is not gonna like allow anything to happen that's gonna hurt Amanda yeah and it's just exactly what happens like Kyle like Carl and Lindsay do get into a disagreement Mm -hmm. I've said this from the beginning when they started dating like Lindsay's very reactive when she gets upset like she really does pop off Mm -hmm. and Carl used to be like that when he was drinking as well but now he's not and Carl even Lindsay even said like he's not a a, like hard conversation person so I always did just wonder like what their confrontations would look like and what their mm-hmm. fights would look like because they are just so different um in the way that they handle things like at, at this point in, in Carl's life mm-hmm. I think we did start to see that a little bit yeah and I think it was actually smart of Carl to kind of shut it down like Lindsay had been drinking and like they weren't Ooh. they weren't gonna go like it wasn't gonna go anywhere yeah and, like sometimes you do just kind of have to be like let's put a pin in this and like we're at a party like let's just yeah. have a good time and everyone's like oh, how did they <laughs> just change yeah <laughs> that's so super interesting that you read it that way because I was like oh no that is such a red flag like I can't believe that he just like was like okay we need to just drop this and like he like when he shuts down like the conversation ends like I feel like that's like so and it's just like it is like it's completely different situations and like different people are gonna have like different reactions to these difficult conversations but for me when he like did that I was like oh my god what is wrong with you like what are you talking about like you have to have this conversation now. Um, and like, I mean, there's no like one right answer for that, but like, it's just interesting because they do have such different like conversation styles, right? Like Carl clearly doesn't want to have these like difficult conversations. And so Carl not wanting to have a difficult conversation totally like allows Kyle to dictate what needs to happen next. And like, Carl basically goes back to Lindsay and is like, okay, with the orders that I have been given from Kyle, my boss, is that you need to apologize to Amanda and you need to be the bigger person and go talk to her, even though Amanda has absolutely no desire to talk to you and would rather die (laughs) than make up with you. Like, quite frankly, like Amanda's never going to make up with Lindsay. I will 100% eat my words if that changes this season, but I will see it happening um and yeah it's just like okay so these are the marching orders that you've been given by Kyle and Carl's not willing to have a difficult conversation so like how is he ever going to stand up for his girlfriend like yeah Carl come on (laughs) that's that's a really good point I didn't think about that see I feel like I even I get swayed by like kind of concept (laughs) like some misconceptions of how I see things kind of going or like just past ideas of of different people yeah but I feel like the same thing that's happening in Summer House with Carl is that like it's the Tom Schwartz effect that happens in Vanderpump Rules. Everybody likes Tom Schwartz. Everybody thinks that Tom Schwartz is a fun person to have around. So they always like go and like defend Tom Schwartz. So all these people that are like anti-Lindsay are like, Carl has changed. It must be because of Lindsay. And like, I like Carl. I want to protect Carl. I want to protect Carl's sobriety. So like, I'm not going to like question that it's Carl might be the problem. I'm going to automatically assume that Lindsay's the problem. And I that's vote no. such a good point. That's <laughs> such a good point. But like, that's the thing. I think a lot of people too are kind of acting like Carl's like a total 
untouchable person now mm-hmm. because he is on this really honorable and respectable journey of sobriety and he's trying to change his life but yeah to be to be fair like he does still really hate confrontation and like mm-hmm. while I don't think he should have confronted Kyle that night when Kyle was clearly inebriated as heck and like yeah. just like nothing was gonna happen yeah he should have confronted him at some point in yeah. the following week yeah um, well, and, and he- stood up for his girlfriend and it, it's true like he just kind of let that happen I think Dan- like like Danielle wanted him to do it there and like that just mm-hmm. like there are some scenarios that are just like they're explosive especially like you as a yeah. sober person sees this person who is like so drunk and so yeah. just like out of line mm-hmm. there was no good way to fix that no but I, yeah. to just sit on it and pretend that it didn't exist is also not the right way <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And like in the moment, I was fine with him like being like, I need to just like distance myself from this experience. I need to like get out of the house the next day. I was totally fine with that at the time. But then like seeing this most recent episode where he's like, okay, but I'm also not going to like actually like question Kyle on kind of like how Amanda's behaving and how he's behaving because Kyle's a contributing factor in why Lindsay is being like completely like dragged (laughs) this entire season by this entire cast of people like Kyle is contributing to that Kyle was an active like contributor to that like two weeks ago or whatever so hard to keep track of these weeks as well because they're all like broken up like two weekends at a time I was so confused um but yeah, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm kind of surprised. I kind of think that maybe this is a bit of a turning point for Carl. And I think it's also unfortunate because we know how this ends because we know that Carl and Lindsay get engaged and that Ka- oh, Lindsay and Danielle are no longer friends. And so yeah. like the the real wedge that this is driven between anybody's relationship is the relationship between Lindsay and Danielle, which is probably the relationship that Lindsay needs most right now. It's, it's yeah, it's so true. I'm still like, I, I still wonder like the steps that they're going to take to get us to being excited about the this engagement, engagement. <sighs> and the other thing that happened in this episode too or was this last week to your point I don't remember what happened it's so, like, so hard to keep track of it's really this slow point. like not much happens in each no. of the seasons that's also why we keep talking about VPR like <laughs> there will be like 10 minutes of really exciting stuff that they put at the end of the episode then they'll mm-hmm. be like to be continued yeah and then we'll finish it the next 10 minutes but then the rest of the time yeah not much will happen yeah and it's so confusing too and I feel like we're just spending so much time watching people like move luggage in and out of the house <laughs> like we're just like okay yeah okay, pack it up okay all right okay you're you're back <laughs> okay. but that's it and like so they were going to Mont. It was when they were going to Montauk, and mm-hmm. Lindsay yes. clearly wanted to go, yes. but then she didn't go because, like, she felt like Carl didn't want her to go. Mm-hmm. And like, I think in that moment, Carl, like, Carl saw she wanted to go. Like, it was very evident. She was like looking at him to be like, "Yeah, do you want to to go? Sure. What do we? What do you and think? He, are we in? Are we out? Maybe yes, no. I don't know." <laughs> he had no intention, but like, yeah. I feel like he could have just been like, "Hey, Lindsay, like, why don't you?" go like I'm just gonna go to bed yeah like go have and, a good like, fun you can night go. with the girls yeah I know and that's what I didn't understand either in that moment I was like what's going on here like you guys don't need to do everything together yeah uh, and then and then so, like and then the girls like oh like she's changing herself for him yeah and what I read too that I thought was really t- telling is had she gone the girls would have been like oh he uh, she left Carl and he's like trying he's like trying to be sober and yeah. she left him like and she, she probably came him. home and she was probably drunk and she was so yeah. sloppy and like she was like smelling like a bar or whatever just like yeah it's just it's true she would have not been able to win in that situation either way and it's really interesting that you bring that up too because the conversation between between uh Maya and Paige the next yes. day because he like why is it that like Lindsay is the problem and Lindsay is the one that like ha- like is like changing for this relationship when it's not seen that like Carl is the part of the problem and Carl isn't encouraging his girlfriend to like go out and do what she wants to do like on the nights that she wants to go out like it takes it takes two to tango to a certain extent and like you know like in a relationship you have to be able to like be receptive to like what your partner needs as well and sometimes their partner wants to be able to go out and they need your permission to be able to do that because they just want like confirmation that you're okay with them doing that and I obviously realized that like going out and like drinking is probably a pretty sensitive subject and so like Lindsay probably doesn't want to like go too far beyond what she, he's gonna think is acceptable but she like needs his permission and his validation to be able to make yeah. those decisions and that's clearly what's happening and I just think it's annoying that like Paige and Maya are yet another people like having a conversation about Lindsay where Lindsay's the problem 
And like Carl just gets to like continue to be a great guy that everybody loves and everybody feels so bad that he's like in this awful relationship with this horrible woman. Like it's yeah, it's oh man. I clearly That's a good take. Feeling. That's a good yeah. take, Iris. Oh, thank the, you. Sh- the Schwartz effect. Uh. The Schwartz effect of Carl. Yeah. It's like it's like blinders. Like we just can't even see like what's going on because we're just like, oh no, he's cute, he's nice, he's tall, we love him. Like he's been through so much. Like he just Yeah. yeah. Just try, I mean just trying to do his best. <laughs> it must be just such a precarious situation too, like because just just dealing with someone like who is sober and then she was sober for a bit and now she's not like that's obviously something we have to navigate yeah it also doesn't help that she does she's just super reactive like she definitely does pop off especially Mm -hmm. when there's alcohol so like they do have to find their balance in that but yeah like that whole thing was so strange and also the thing about them moving too quickly is like they're both almost 40 like relationships when you're older move a lot faster yeah. So I feel like everyone is talking about how fast they're moving is a yeah. bit like unnecessary. And yeah. like all the people who are saying this, like just don't have a leg to stand on in regards to their relationships. Like Amanda and Kyle are definitely not the ones who should be dishing out about like the right path of a relationship. And no, what I started thinking too, is I wonder if it's also because Cal has never changed himself for his relationship, even in times yeah, that he true. should have. Yep. <laughs> right like he continued to party and it got him in like a lot of trouble yeah so I guess maybe he just like really just can't comprehend Lindsay and Carl's new relationship where they are both kind of changing a little bit Uh, like people have opinions on that as well and like to be fair when Danielle was like you know for two really outspoken people you guys are really like you bad at handling or what did she say like you guys really keep a lot of stuff in and Mm, it's true like they do together they seem to be more kind of muted versions of themselves at the yeah. moment from what we're seeing mm-hmm. like you know I'm I'm not saying they're perfect it's just like the the group is really not even giving them a chance and I do feel like they're creating this kind of like us against the world yeah. mentality that is making them just burrow deeper into each other like why mm-hmm. would they not because yeah. they feel like they have to they're the only two who are going to have each other's back I didn't yeah. even know I would be having this take <laughs> <laughs> I know I was especially... making this in real time <laughs> I know especially at the beginning of the season when we were kind of like why are they here like I don't understand but no like now I'm kind of like, a like yeah maybe I do still kind of wonder like why they are here because like it's got to be pretty like torturous but um they shouldn't be they 100% should not have been there but then there would be no season because that's the only thing people want to talk about and that's just it I'm like okay literally if I'm thinking about like who actually has a storyline this year like Amanda only has a storyline because of Lindsay Kyle always will have a storyline Kyle will always have something to talk about but like even like Paige Sierra and Maya like what are you guys bringing to the table like is Sierra I feel like we got like the most personality out of her ever okay we had to she did Karma Brown that was amazing Karma Brown I (laughs) I've never loved Sierra more than so in much. this season. Like she, I was really not a fan of her most, mm-hmm. like basically all the seasons post Austin. Yeah. Like I just like, I did not like what she was bringing and yeah. like, I didn't understand why she was so angry at mm-hmm. like Lindsay instead of at Austin. But like, we actually saw her be really funny and like really just like so herself. I'm really liking her this season without, without a man. Yeah, I know me too. And like that was like l- literally that was the most personality ever. And like now I'm like, okay, great. Now we get to know Sierra. This is gonna be amazing. I'm so excited. But like yet we still aren't still seeing as much from her as we possibly like. I don't know what's going on with her life. Like I don't like she's like living in New York. She's like still like talking to Chris about the fact that she used to be a nurse. Like that's about it. Like I don't know what her day to day looks like. I know more about like Sam and Gabby at this point than I do about like what really Maya, Paige, or Sierra are up to. So like I don't know. That's so true. Yeah. It makes me wonder like, is it time for like a new version of this show? Are we ready for like Summer House 2.0? And if so, can we center it around like Sam, Gabby, and Danielle? Cause like I love the three of them together and they're like little exchanges like in the kitchen like late at night and stuff and even in like their like room that they're sharing together like it's so good I love it so much oh yeah I love their late night hype like hyping each other up sessions yeah I, know. Yeah, I totally agree watching this season is just showing that like summer house right now as a series is just so lost like yeah I feel like they've truly lost the plot of what the premise of this show used to be mm-hmm. and we've talked about this a lot so but 
it was it was about the friendships and it was about a, a group of like 20 and 30 somethings who came to the Hamptons on the weekend and like partied and they were actually friends and then yeah. we also followed them in New York and that was yeah. fun to see their work they like got rid of the working part I guess because most of them are just are like influencers now or yeah but I could still watch that like I still want to see what goes on in their day they mm-hmm. all hate each other and then they just keep like cycling new people who usually like seem to have no connection to the cast yeah I think they got lucky in this season that like people are liking Sam and Gabby and I think yeah. they actually are a fun addition but they have to make a decision on like what to do with this show because also like most of the catch is getting too old that it's not even fun for us to watch. Okay, sorry. It's not that they're too old. You yeah. can party at any age. <laughs> you can party at any age. <laughs> but it's just like a lot of them are just kind of like naturally maturing out of it, like Carl and Lindsay. Yeah. And I'm sorry, the parties, like they look so sad now. I know. Like, did you know that? These such ragers. They were crazy. And like now it's just like nothing. Like I don't understand. I don't know if they're just like not inviting as many people or like what's going on. And I think that a lot of people when they like when you broach this topic of like a summer house 2.0, like what does the next version of this look like? Like I think a lot of people are very afraid that like the next version of this is going to be like a bunch of Sams that are like 20 somethings like in their like early to mid 20s. Like but honestly, like Gabby is like 30, 31, I think. I think Danielle is like 34, 35, 36. Like she's still like older. Like I think you could still center it like around a cast that is like in that kind of like you know young professional kind of like phase of their life and that could be anywhere between like 20 let's say 25 to 40 but like I just think that we need like some new life like come into this yeah because because I maybe it's because I'm too old now but like I don't personally want to see a bunch of like 20 somethings like even with southern hospitality like I just I don't understand I can't Get, understand them because I'm yeah. just like what is this is this what, <laughs> is this what people do now <laughs> is this how the Gen Z's talk <laughs> um, yeah although we warmed up to southern hospitality we did, we check, did come around check we our came, episode we came around to it at the end <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like but just something different and like I I still would like to see a version of the show around the OGs because like at this point like we have attachments to them Mm -hmm. yes of course like we're being a little bit like like analytical or critical in some of the things that they do but like I genuinely do really like this cast yeah and I want to continue to see what they're up to yeah but just not in this house (laughs) yeah well and maybe they could be coming in as kind of like guests of right like they could come in for weekends and like we could like find out what's going on with their life we could get like a little update it would be kind of like um back in the seasons when they used to like have like their moms all come down for like a weekend like oh, it could yeah. be the same kind of thing where it would be just like okay this is gonna be like a different vibe of the weekend but like we're gonna like get, get like a different kind of experience from the group and it was so fun it was always so interesting like I that feel like that up, could be like a great way to do it that brings up another really good point of just like how real and like real life it used to be like they literally like they were bringing their parents like we're actually getting such a glimpse into their life and they all like really just seemed to get along and it was so much more fun I know Maya made a comment um I don't know if it was on like a a live or something on social media that a lot of the fun moments get (laughs) kind of left on the cutting room floor right and if that's the case like I we want to see those (laughs) moments like it's really like we don't just want to see like a whole episode of everyone hating each other like yeah it's fun to watch them have fun like that was the premise of the show Mm -hmm. yeah exactly well and and that's just it like the parents also like were fun because they kind of were a little bit like wild cards and they could like throw in like like I think in the early seasons was it the Workus twins yeah what they're like like Horkus Workus something like that twins and like the like the mom and dad like literally come and they like grill Carl because they're like so you guys you're dating our daughter like let's find out about you and like obviously he was like a total f boy and it's like he wasn't actually interested in dating her (laughs) and so it was like super awkward but like that was like such a good dynamic like and if and if they are really leaving out like the fun parts, then I'm like really surprised because I'm like, I don't understand why you're making us watch this instead of like just like some random fun hijinks. We love that. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know what they're going to do. I think they're probably going to have to like reconsider it a little bit after this yeah. episode. Um, Like or even like Amanda and Kyle keep going to Winter House, which like I feel like Winter House Winterhouse is weird. It, Winterhouse yeah, is Winter like House. a weird. I don't know what's going on with Winter House. But I'm excited for Danielle to be there. Yeah, and I'm excited for Benny to be there too. Benny, um, Brian Benny from uh, uh, Family Karma. 
Oh yeah, I have you see, need I to catch up on. It has to. So good. If you haven't watched Family Karma, watch Family Karma. It's and really good. That's true. And Schwartz is going to be there, which I feel like will be interesting to see him outside of like the VPR cast for yeah. a prolonged amount of time, especially after everything that happened with Scandal. <laughs> Oh, I wonder if they're going to talk about it on the show. Like apparently yeah. they're talking about on uh, Ultimate Girls Trip. They're talking about Jen, Jen Shaw. Uh, like Giselle is just gr- like grilling them. Oh, amazing. Um, uh, if only we to... didn't live in Canada, <laughs> we could watch it. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? What is going on, Peacock? I don't understand. Like let us just watch the shows live. We used to be able to watch the shows live. I don't understand. It's so upsetting. Even Miami um, just came out because they filmed and they're still putting it out on like a week by week basis. Like we can't uh, even binge. So painful. Come on, guys. Haven't we suffered enough? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, anyways, on that note, <laughs> let us know your thoughts. Let us know what you guys think like Summer House needs to do to be able to redeem itself next season. Uh, and if you guys have any like thoughts and feelings about like Winter House, we'd love to hear them too. Like anybody that you think that should be like thrown into the mix. If you're watching Family Karma, let us know that you're watching Family Karma because I want to know. <laughs> it's literally so good. 